One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video, guys. Today I want to talk about what I, I didn't even know what to call this. Um, I'm just going to call it my rule of safety. But it's something that I want to talk about. It, it, it's, 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 it's a rule that you make um, when it comes down to one of those decision-making moments in, in the moment when you're trading. So this one's going to be kind of a nitty-gritty webinar because the last one was kind of broad, right? Like I try to bounce back and forth. Like last one was on psychological traps, I think. Uh, and that one was pretty um, broad and, you know, psychological. This one's going to be kind of super nitty gritty in the point, like on the chart, what to do kind of stuff. And anyway, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'll am i get into it later, but we're going to, it's, it's what I call my rule of safety. And so like, if this is your first webinar, welcome. Uh, this is, this is just where I go over the table of contents. Um, I'm going to go over the market sentiment, which is slowly getting better in my opinion, week to week. We'll go over the key traders of the week. And honestly, I don't really have very many trades. I think I have like three trades this week, like maybe if that. So I'll go over that. Um, uh, then I have two kind of two, two rants that I want to talk about this week. Two things that kind of bugged me this week that I really uh, about chat or in chat that I really want to talk about. Basically, this rule of safety is it stems from the question, like us mods get this question and then weekend mentoring, we get this question all the time. If there was one thing that you, you wish someone would tell, would have told you when you first started, what would it be? Like, I never know what, you know, like to say to this because I really don't know. Like I've, I've been in MIC for what, almost a year or two now. And I still don't exactly know how to answer this question, but I think I figured it that out to this one, uh, what, what I'm going to talk about, this rule of safety. Because, I mean, the, the, the obvious answer is like, oh, like patience or discipline or, you know, stick to A plus setups, that kind of stuff. The, I'm going to go into the, the number one thing I wish someone had taught me when I first started. And that's what we're going to be going over. Well, that's obvious. That's the, that's the number one rule, I guess. But, I mean, this is like the number one, I guess, technique I wish someone would have taught me. When I first started, anyway, and then we'll end and we'll end the session with Q and A. Although hopefully it's not a big one. Hopefully I cover everything. But if at any time you guys have a question, feel free to go ahead and throw it out there, and I'll try to get to it as long as it's pertinent to kind of what we're talking about. I'm going on six years. Yeah, going. Well, yeah. I mean, it's the end of 2020. I don't exactly know what month and shit I started, but yeah, five six years. I think 2021 is a six year. Oh yeah. And so the prerequisite webinars that will help you with this is being definitive and scaling. So it's going to be kind of about scaling today. Anyway, so where were we in the last couple, you know, a week slash a week ago, right? A, a week ago, or I think I skipped a webinar. So like a couple weeks ago, the new CDC COVID numbers came out like, and that kind of like just the comorbidity rates are showing that like, hey, like maybe that quelled a lot of fears and stuff like that. And that, that kind of helped the spy rally and fuel that squeeze that we saw and that it would definitely wasn't one to fight. And that we, we still had that October selling and the election hesitation coming up. So, you know, I literally, we were, this was when we were in squeeze mode, like a week or two ago. You know, I said like, I'm not going to try to guess the top, but I'm going to guess that the top is coming. You know, it's a when thing, not necessarily a price thing, but I, I basically didn't know any any sign of stoppage of that squeeze, anything except time and and technical reasons such as extension, right? And so and that's I think ultimately just kind of what what can the market the combination of just being overextended, overextended the U4 dying, the squeeze dying, and and the, and the election hesitation. I think ultimately that's what stunted it eventually. Like right, like I, I said that for weeks, and then we kept going higher, 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 and then we got stunted. So that's where we were and here's where we are. Um, so this is, so this week, as opposed to the last, you know, the, the, the late weeks of August um, and the early weeks of September, here we're in the third week of September, going into the third week of September, we're starting to see the sparks of Tinder out of the ashes, right? Like that's kind of what we're seeing, right? And so like last week slash the week before was probably about peak deadness where the range really got the shit. Like it was literally every single day, not much of anything. And I think that we've bounced from the bottom a little bit. So I'm going to call that as the bottom of the dead market. I think that's about as worse as it's going to get. And honestly, guys, you guys who have, this is your first year of trading, you're still spoiled because that was like the, that was like the strongest dead market I've ever seen. As, you know, as far as being a dead market, that was pretty, there was still stuff to do, stuff to watch, stuff to, stuff to lose money on, right? Like, Normally debt, like when, when the market's super, super dead, it's actually kind of, it's kind of easy not to make, it's kind of easy not to lose money because there's literally nothing to do. It's when it's like this, it's kind of easy to lose money, right? When there's, when there's stuff to trade a little bit, but nothing like super solid, 
nothing super good, everything super crowded on the couple names that there are, that's when it's really easy to lose money. And that's, it took me a few years to learn this, but it really just, it, it took, it, it taught me that like, it's so much easier just to take your entire foot off the gas and just save your energy because most likely, like it, you guys all know how easy it is to lose in the market. And even like, I even got like last week, not this week, I even got like kind of antsy, like, and, and, and I've been trying to not be antsy and I got a little bit antsy and like, you know, I took a couple of trades here and there and like, I was just like, I mean, like I lost a couple hundred, like I lost a couple hundred bucks and I lost a couple hundred bucks and I lost a couple, I'm just like, what am I doing? Like, I, I just kind of boredom trade like, and like, it's not as if like, I, I, I trading small, but it's like, I didn't need to lose any of it. Like, why did I even lose any of it? See? And like I def I definitely mitigated it more than last year, but like I caught myself last week kind of boredom trading a little bit. And I was just like, and I was, and my excuse was I'm trading really small and I, and I was, but it's just like, still, it's like, why couldn't I stop trading completely? Like, you know, like it's still in me. Like, and that's why like, I need to take extreme measures. Like I need to leave, right? Like I need to, like, I have started waking, like, this is not me at all. Like I, I'm, I trade in Hawaii and I'm, I'm always up at like one thirty. Like for me, that's 7.30 market time. I mean, when there's something to watch, I'll be up by seven at my screens by seven, everything on by seven. If there's something to watch, like that's normally like how I've been, you know, how I trade. But like lately I've been forcing myself to wake up at nine. And I know that sounds very like, so you're just like, you know, unprepared. But the thing is, is that I am too tempted to fucking trade pre-market. Like when I'm super bored and I haven't tried to trade in a while, I like to trade pre-market and like I suck at trading free market. I'm not very good at it. So like, I need to take, like, I force myself to wake up a little bit later. I'm kind of, kind of treating it as a little kind of relaxed time trying to just keep my mind sane a little bit. But like, yeah, last week I lost, I lost a few hundred bucks, totally unnecessary on just like, well, let me just like, you know, let me just put some shares on here just because. And like, of course I lost on them because it was stupid. I, I fell victim to it a little bit last week. And so I like this week I was like, nope, nope. Take your hands off. Just wait. I will wait for the runners. Like it will be so apparent when it comes, it won't even be funny. You guys, it'll be like, ah, here it is. And the worst thing that you guys can do, I promise, the absolute worst fucking thing that you can do is when that market comes back again where everything's running. And the thing is, I'm, I'm speaking from a long perspective, but also from a short perspective. Um, if you're a short seller, you want the market to be hot. Why? Because what, when the market is hot, that means there's a lot of attempts there's a lot of runners, 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 runners. And only still, only a couple of them are going to win the attention, win the volume. And then there's all that sympathy rejects. Those are the ones that the shorts want to take advantage of. It's a really hard market for, for shorts when there's only like two runners, right? When there's only two things to trade. The shorts are all just basically, con, you know, like condensed in these two tickers and you're just fighting everybody for covers and it's ridiculously hard. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. Do I think it will run or finally die, Kodak? I honestly don't. I, I think I, I don't have I don't I don't want to say I don't care, but that's that's not what I mean. What I mean is, yeah, I don't care. Do I think it, it's gonna go? What does that mean? I don't think it has a potential to explode. Like, I would be really surprised if it ever got back above twenty five. I'd be really surprised if it ever got back above twenty five. So I don't think it's going to go finally. But I think like it's it's kind of bottom tier. For a while like and so it would just slow fade anyway so it's not really on my radar last and first out for swinging do anything if i covered 75 percent of the swing is a little bit different because there's a little bit less consolidation on swing charts than day trading charts on day trading charts there's almost always going to be a consolidation whereas a, a, on a swing trading chart it's very it's more common to see consecutive candles in a row i think so it's it, it's a it, it, it's almost apples and oranges there um you know, like there's, a, there's more dependability on pullbacks from extension on intradays than, than I think on swings. So, I mean, so the resetting is banking on that, that almost assured consolidation before a direction pick, which, which happens basically on every single stock chart in day trading, but not all the time in swings. So if you covered 75% of your position, you would cover your best average and then leave the worst bit of the average. Yes. Yeah, so that's kind of the opposite. Yeah. I, I honestly wouldn't know.
I would have to think about that for a little while. Like, honestly, I don't, I don't know that. I, I, I haven't thought about it that way. It does. It, it seems a little counterintuitive, but I haven't really given it much thought. I'd have to think about that for like a day. If it would be better over time, you covered your best average right away and then leave the crappy average on. I mean, mathematically, averages average out. It's it's more so to do with just covering the. It's more so to do with just resetting because you're banking on the consolidation, whereas necessarily trying to. You're not like insuring more profit one or the other. You're just kind of trying to take advantage of stalls in which you might be able to fix your average and for you know like the probability that bounces are going to happen very you know it's probably going to bounce again you're just betting, banking on that fact i think that's stronger in day trading than in swing trading to reset the position does that mean that you would have to take off all early shares or just part yeah so that's a good question i knew this question was coming i was waiting for this question um i I think that you should take off a significant chunk and my minimum is like a third. Like I like to like it, it again, this is a sliding scale on how much you don't like your position or not, or how much you do like your position. Right. And normally just the better your average, then the, the less that you really need to take off. Remember you're managing risk. So the worst position you are in risk wise after you get the pull from the scale or the, the bounce from that scale and long, it, it's just a time to reset your, your risk profile. Right. You know, like, you want to get into a now you you want to turn your trade into a favorable position for you so like if your average really sucks then i mean dude you, you probably want to cover like two thirds right or like minimum half right i knew this cover i knew this question was coming my minimum is like a third like normally if if you ask the question if you ask that question and you don't like your position it's time then it's time to activate the rule of safety you, you want to take off at least a significant chunk and for me it's like a third minute thank you so much for watching our video if you want to see more of our videos please subscribe to our youtube channel by clicking the button here we do our best to post a new video every single day if you have any questions about mic or any general trading questions please text tosh using the number here also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos